everybody jeff aka jakers here it's sunday afternoon it's 12 44 p.m on the 15th of september 2024 i am here with another dsp react how are you all doing today i hope your weekend is progressing very nicely you are wondering what it is i'm going to be doing a react to it is part three of the dsp documentary like i said i've been kind of doing one uh, part per week for the last couple weeks we are now entering our number i think this would be about roughly our number three because uh these videos uh the i stopped watching the documentaries at about the one hour mark per part so we are into uh, hold on uh, okay there it goes we are into about our number three of the documentary and boy we're we're really getting into the lore now ladies and gentlemen we are at the part where uh it's i think if i remember correctly they were introducing the or june the king was introducing the uh sons of kojima which was a very known uh detractor group that focused on phil burnell so let's actually get over to that right about now okay so let's turn on the video there we go and uh here, let me fix my camera i don't know why my camera is so weird hold on let me fix that one second i don't know why it was so short or so small uh i'll have a little bit more okay there we go. So let's get on to the show. Or should, how about we move down here today? And what about over here? Yeah. We'll leave it like that. Let's go to that. Okay, that's that, that looks better. Okay, so we're, they're introduced. If I remember correctly, June is introducing the Sons of Kojima. Hours at a time to no benefit other than that claim. They are united by an overweight, middle aged, failing, ailing creator. They were persistently hated within the detractor communities because they, being allowed to exist in their space, somewhat represented their community, albeit in Okay, so a lot of people wonder like what my stance is. Like what do I want done? What do I want Phil to do? And my answer is quite simple. I want Phil off the goddamn platform. He has shown that he cannot handle responsibility of what he was given. Because of that, I think he needs to go outside and get a legitimate job this is not a job this is a hobby even though he wants to say it's a job it's not a job it's a fucking hobby and the fact is if he's having to beg for money is that job really or is that business really a success no it's not it is not i will not i i do not endorse anybody to you know commit crimes against phil he's not worth going to jail for but I would encourage him to go out and get a l legitimate job. If he could get a job and still stream, then yeah, I'd be happy if he did that because he'd at least be out there earning his money. Oh, I mean, that's what you're saying. You're saying you could do something if it's just for the laws. Nobody's supposed to get mad or offended. That, that, just, that, that, that's not what I'm law. saying. I'm saying you shouldn't take a uh, fucking encyclopedia page Dramatica seriously. There are also times when they invited Mr. Medicare on a creator well-known for his banter. Okay, how much money would it take, uh, this is for all of you, for one of you to suck uh, Phil's cock? None. He's that, no, no. I don't even know why he'd ask that question. I don't know the whole context of this, but yeah, none. None. And if he even tried putting that shit near me, I'd cut it off. I don't, I don't, I'm not even <laughs> because I'm not interested in that. That's fucked up. See, the fault there was that whoever this is with uh, SOK that's talking, uh, he, he just continued to engage with it. I would have cut it down right then when he asked, how much, you know, like, how much would it cost for him, to, for you to give him a blowjob? I'd be like, none, because I cut that motherfucker off. And I'd leave it at that. And if Medicare continued to try to push it, what, $10,000, a million dollars? I'd say, I already gave my answer, move on. If you don't want to move on, then get your ass booted. I'm not playing this fucking game, you know. But then again, I don't know the full context of what this was about. But yeah, the fact is that these guys were so they they were hesitant to answer, and that's what Medicare jumped on. If it was me, how much would you cause you? None, because I cut that motherfucker off. You're telling me you're not gonna suck a dick for ten million dollars? No. Really? 
You wouldn't suck it. You wouldn't get on your knees and slurp up some man mayonnaise for ten million fucking dollar dues. Okay, now uh, I can't recall if they asked him, but it was me. After I gave my answer of fuck no, I'd ask him, okay, how much would you would it take you to uh, put your dignity aside? Because that's what it is to me. I have my dignity. Ten million or a hundred million dollars, I would not do it. No, I'd rather be dirt poor. At least I could say I don't suck dick. I don't want to lose my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit about dignity? You got $10 million in the bank. You can make people forget with the money. You can black hole that shit on the internet. Does the thought of Phil gently rubbing your hair as he comes in your mouth, does that bother you that much? What the fuck? <laughs> so, Jesus. This is so wrong on so many levels. Well, there you go. They refuse to answer. But if you notice, when I asked that question, they all went silent because they were thinking of a number. <laughs> Every one of them was thinking of a number. Some comments under this near 50-minute long video read... Quote, Christ, without any DSP material to commentate over or talk about, these guys just got nothing. That's some weapons grade humiliation. Christ, these guys. Okay, now I'm not sure exactly when this was, but the years that are on these uh, comments, it looks like it's been, you know, quite a while. So this could have been when I was uh, going to college and it was one of the times I was not actively following DSP gaming. And his attempts to regulate the community besides deciding what is and isn't allowed to be monetized on the basis of moral superiority over Phil. His antics and strange history are also entertaining. That was another reason why he was exposed and why they're over. If he literally came to me and goes, Jeff, you're not supposed to monetize this, I'd tell him to go fuck off. He's not the one that's making my content. If he doesn't like what I post and that I'm making money, which I don't, too fucking bad. Too fucking bad. You don't run me. See, I've skipped Panalee's brother's wedding. Quote, what did the SOK do? Well, first, they decided to find out the address and date of the wedding. Yes, that's entirely true. They're so fucking sick that they, on their own and without my mentioning it for months, researched and found the event, and then spread that info all over the internet. They then decided to spin it that the reason we weren't attending was because I had to force Leander to skip it so I can stay home and play Fallout 4 to make money. They actually accused me of keeping her at home. That sounds just about something that Phil would do. Hell, if Phil can't even get his cat a goddamn blood test because he's too busy paying, uh, not paying, playing games to try to make money or whatever, what's there to say that he would not skip somebody's wedding simply because he wants to play a video game and make said money? No, this, this sounds like exactly something that Phil Burnell would do. Forcefully. It couldn't have been further from the truth. It was the crippling fear that the SOK themselves, who found the damn date... Crippling fear, oh my god, these guys are fucking trolls and he's talking about crippling fear. ...he missed the wedding, they then turned their own vile actions into a way to make us look bad after the fact. It's mind-numbing, isn't it? Unquote. After the fall of the sons of Kojima, there was a rise in more passive trolling. On Phil's forums, there was a crop-up of clear catfishes that had all miraculously <laughs> turned 18 years old at the time. Then, there was a pirate-themed treasure map made of the places Phil frequented and it was often thought to enjoy. With the inclusion of health foods and a gym placed just out of his reach due to the uncrossable bridge of certain death. On Instagram, there was a new strategy of trolling through indifference. No matter what picture Phil posted, there was bound to be tens if not hundreds of comments stating two words. Well, really just one word with two variations. Comments were either okay or okay. Without fail, these cropped up and overwhelmed any other comment. Even just comments wanting to understand what was going on were met with a single response, okay. Phil even treated his audience to a pretty <laughs> unique unboxing video. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil here, and welcome to a pretty unique unboxing video. Phil thought that this video was unique because of what he was unboxing. What made it unique was for the first three minutes, his reflection was easily visible. And he was doing two things. He was swaying left and right, and and this these this is one of the things that uh, people on the spectrum do. I work with several students who do rock back and forth, and I don't buy this whole shit that it's his back because if you listen to him, he says he's not suffering back problems anymore. He recently said he doesn't suffer back problems anymore, but what does he do? He still fucking rocks. No, I think it's an uh, indicator that he is on the spectrum. Like I said in a pre in the previous uh, in part two, if I remember correctly, I don't think that he is severely impacted on the uh, 
on the spectrum, but he is definitely on, I'd say he's like on the very outskirts of it, you could say. He was doing his famous T pose. Phil had swayed much in the past, but rarely was it not in first person view. He claims it is because of back issues. Oh my god! The snorting is blamed ears. on what DSP claims is a post nasal drip. The snorting plays into his depiction of a pig. Combined with his ability <laughs> to remain online and survive like a cockroach, the pig roach. derisive nickname Pig Roach. His pig laugh, roach. his sway, his snorts, all could be, and some more, made into several minute long compilations of Phil doing these singular actions. Phil doing these actions in tandem would also oh, be. The oh, the camera's on! It's been on the whole time, huh? <laughs> I still said, like I said in the previous video, he should have really leaned into that whole, oh, the camera's been on, it's been on the whole time, huh? He should have really leaned into that. He should have monetized it. Would it have lasted forever? No, but he could have made some good money off of some sh off some shirts that uh, literally kind of just played into it. The whole, oh, camera's on, or I was scratching my leg. Seriously, dude. Purchase. Then there were two food-related items Hello. that always got viewers' attention. The first was sparked by this tweet where DSP states he likes penne. What he means is he likes the pasta, but in Spanish, <laughs> yeah. penne means penis. The last item viewers took note in was his drink of choice. Uh, I think gin and tonic is my drink of choice. I, not every single day, but I do have a, a gin and tonic or two every once in a while, maybe you know a few times a week at night to unwind, especially if it's a... Uh, yeah, well, just do one too. I'm, okay, maybe a few times a week. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, dude. I swear. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a big boy. I'm all growing up. I'm not a children's entertainer. Seriously, kids. <laughs> it's been a stressful day or if my back's hurting me. And, uh, yes, I do have a drink. Some gin and tonic. I guess I'll, I'll start the night right with a sip. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this. I have a drink tonight. I have a gin and, a gin and uh, tonic next to me, which I'll be sipping from time to time. I won't be downing the whole thing. It was not often that Phil drink on stream. However, this proclivity did extend outside of his streams. Sometimes the bottle or mixed drinks made his way into his vacation videos. Everything else here, including the gin, which I'll probably drink mixed with that, that uh, Sprite. To indulge so much costs Phil a fair bit. But now, in addition to owing money to credit card companies and the like, he in September found that he owed money to a fierce collector. I get this, this uh, letter, all right? I get this letter, and the letter says... We suspect that you are doing business in the state of Washington under the name DSP Gaming, okay? We believe that you need to register and pay state business and occupation taxes. Please answer all of these questions for us. Phil, since... It's kind of funny, kind of hilarious, because there's been times he will say, like, especially when he, they were coming after him for... You know, the, the business taxes. Oh, it's not a business. It's not a business. But then what does he do now lately? He claims that this is his business. Hell, I watched. I'm, uh, I was, as I was getting the assets ready for this, uh, reaction, I was watching his September 15th, uh, or today, uh, the, uh, his podcast. And he was literally calling this his business. He tries to fucking skirt the law. He tries to skirt the law. And this is one of the things that I say he needs to be called out on, especially when he was, uh, especially when he got, uh, oh God, I lost my train of thought. Oh, when he announced that he was, uh, basically scamming his viewers for all that money to play that stupid fucking gotcha game. I'm pretty sure the IRS would like to hear about that. He moved to Washington, had not been paying state taxes. He claims the reason behind this is because he continued to list the services of his accountant from Connecticut. What kind of fucking idiot? Well, I, I answered it right there. Phil is the fucking kind of idiot. But seriously, what kind of fucking idiot would take the tax advice from somebody who is based in Connecticut, who knows Connecticut laws and Connecticut tax codes and all that shit, over somebody who actually lives in the fucking state of Washington? It's not the it's not Washington State's fault. It's this idiot's fault. To clear the air here, because a lot of people have misconceptions. My tax attorney in the state of Connecticut was a certified public accountant, was a dean of accounting at a college for several. Just because he was a dean at college doesn't mean he knows the shit of what's going on in Washington State. 
would you would you trust uh would you trust a, a a realtor in Connecticut to help you find a home in Washington? No, because they're in Connecticut. Dollars one year to do my taxes properly. The importance of this is now Phil was claiming to owe state taxes since 2014, stacking yet another reason why 2017 was the year that finally doomed Phil financially. But at least he wasn't bankrupt. The grander and more dramatic reveal this year was of his new girlfriend. Yet the reveal photos only show yeah. the back of her head. Phil yeah. to be able to hide a relationship for this long was surprising. A reason for only showing the back of her head was that Phil was slowly starting to separate his personal and online life, meaning that there would no longer be condo tours or virtually any videos outside of his office, save for a few additional DSP tries at videos like his attempt to recreate the virality of his Axe Body Scrubber video. This could only be beneficial. It wouldn't allow viewers to analyze his new purchases, his eating habits, anything that can be used against him, or even the people around him. Keeping Cat anonymous was likely Phil's attempt to protect her, though it did have its weakness and was immediately exploited. So they fabricate this story that I hired an escort <laughs> to come. That fucking laugh. And the reason that he, uh, that they, you know, came up with this escort idea is basically because of the fact that he was so fucking open. So yeah. You're always open, and all of a sudden you start closing off everything. People are going to start making, uh, coming to, th you know, coming to conclusions that may not be true. And this is all on Phil's fault. If Phil decided to keep everything private from the very beginning, then nobody would have fucking cared. But when Phil would go on his condo tours and go, "Hey guys, look at all the stupid shit I bought," his my words, not his. Look at all the stupid shit I bought. I bought this stupid statue. I bought this ugly fucking book. I bought a whole bunch of fucking games. I wasted several thousand dollars on credit cards. Look at all this stuff. I'm useless shit. I'm not going to have it in ten plus years. If he didn't do any of that shit, if he didn't introduce Panda. If he, you know, if he didn't do all this stupid garbage in the very beginning, nobody would have fucking cared about, uh, about Cat in the present. No, the reason that he wanted to show off all the stuff was it's his way of fucking, of fucking, uh, bragging, of lording over everybody. Because he feels that he, Phil Burnell views himself as somebody who is above everybody. I'm above you. I got a BMW. I'm above you. Look at all this useless shit I have. But if he didn't do any of that to begin with, he would not be in this situation now. Phil creates his own hell that he inhabits. Is that us, dude? Is that us? It's Phil. Phil created the hell that he lives in. Come visit me during my Christmas break. I paid her thousands of dollars or owe her thousands of dollars apparently i don't even know what the full story is because i'm not really following it well true to her word kimberly did know where to release that information too over on the forum kiwi farms a mysterious woman shows up to elaborate on what's going on in december 2017 a mysterious woman claiming to be a high-end escort with a history with phil was claiming that phil had not paid her and if she did not receive the money owed then she would release all the details of the event and so she did on Kiwi Farms, she developed a somewhat shallow story of Phil taking her out to dinner and spending a fair amount of money on her. Sprinkled in are notes about his bad credit, his disappointing manhood, and general notes on his house. This reads as too good to be true, as it's hitting the notes that want to be heard, while simultaneously not providing evidence outside of a testimony. The Kiwi Farms users were highly skeptical, but even so were enjoying the chaos this person was causing. But day after day of not providing a single piece of evidence and users finding strange inconsistencies in her story, it was clear that the pieces were not fitting. It was only after users discovered that the images were not of this person's origin that she comes out and says she was hacked. It was not her at all. It was a catfish using her Twitter with stolen images. But no one was convinced. As a final Hail Mary, this person attempted to shift the blame on Fred Fox of the defunct Sons of Kojima by taking down their website and bringing it back up with the simple Fred Fox in the heading. It was not until this fake escort's identity was found under a different name, Angelina Capri, that the true culprits were unmasked. It was quite easy to find the domain registry and with it came the identity. The culprits quickly tried to amend this information, but it had already been archived. The original registry had their full name, address, phone number, and their email. This Whoops. gave the Kiwi Farms users <laughs> everything they needed and soon the culprits were fully doxxed, including their cat. 
revealed and archived was their personal YouTube channel, one of their daughter's YouTube channels, Twitter's photo buckets, a lengthy history of information that was more than enough anyone needed to confirm this married couple ran an extortion and impersonation racket. They had a history of impersonating beautiful women and using their images to create profiles on adult websites. Did they actually think that they'd get a shit ton of money out of Phil Burnell? The guy who has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a fucking gotcha game. Yeah, this was in the past, I understand that. But did they actually think that Phil Burnell was actually somebody that was loaded with money? Seriously? Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. Sites where the wife will livestream her real body and pleasure herself, but only reveal her lower half as to not spoil the ruse. It was only when they tried to extort Phil through a different tactic and interact with his highly paranoid community that this was all discovered. If there was any doubt left, Phil would cave in and reveal his girlfriend Kat, who moved in shortly after. Number one, like I said, it's the best relationship I've ever okay, been hold on, in hold on, my hold on. life. Okay. Okay, let's go back to this. Let, let's go back to this. Hold on. It may take a second. Hold on. There we go. Look at how different Kat looks then. Compared to now. Now, I'm not fat shaming her. I'm a fat ass motherfucker myself. But it's quite sad to see what Phil has done to his wife. I'm placing Kat's cat, the, the size that she has, you know, gone to. Or that she grew to. I think that's a better way. I, I, I blame what happened to Kat to be on Phil. I blame, I blame Phil for that. Bill has a habit of isolating and abusing his, uh, you know, the, the, the ladies in his life. He yanked Panda Lee across the country. And if I remember correctly, didn't she, didn't he end up restricting her communication, you know, like kind of her having any kind of contact with her family? And look what he did to Kat. Moved her across the country. Removed items that would help her stay in shape. And then he, and then he, you know, constant just fast food time after time after time after time. I wouldn't be shocked if Cat secretly hates Phil for what he's done to her. Who moved in shortly after? Number one, like I said, it's the best relationship I've ever been in in my life. Okay. No, it's I not. Feel like she's my. Son. That's a lie. I do. I truly do. Phil, wa Phil doesn't want a soulmate. He doesn't even want a wife. He wants a surrogate mother. He wants somebody there to clean after him, to feed him, to pamper him, and to pat his head. He, because he did, mommy's not there for him. He wants a mommy. That's what he wants. He doesn't want a fucking wife. If he, if, if he, Loved his wife. Do you think he would have treated her the way he does? I don't think he would if he actually loved her. No. He wants... He basically wants a maid. Or a mom, I guess you could also say. He doesn't want a wife. He doesn't want a wife. And I, uh, I am in love with her. Absolutely. No, you're not. She's in love with you're me. fucking not. And if she were to move in... Number one, she has a job that she, you know, can can probably find a job out here similar or whatever and make income to help immediately. Number two, cooking and everything, helping with the responsibilities of the house so I can get back to how I was. Right there. Right there. She can help with the responsibilities of the house. It, it isn't that he even loves her. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm I, you know, yeah, he mentioned it earlier, but it's not legitimate. You would think that if you're going to be bringing a wife or a, a girlfriend or whatever across the country, you would more want to talk about just how much happy you are with her, how she makes you feel. To him, it's more about the services she can offer. And that's why I say he doesn't want a fucking wife or a girlfriend. He wants somebody there to pamper him. He wants somebody there to clean the house, to feed him, to, to earn money so he doesn't have to spend all of his money on bills. He can play that stupid fucking gotcha game. He doesn't love her. And if that's what, in his mind, if that's what he thinks love is, boy, he is fucked up. And Cuck Cat did. The pair seemed well off, even if Cat did appear awkward and uninteractive on stream, her uncut. Every time I've seen this 
fucking video. I constantly say to my or say to myself because I'm talking out loud, but I'm you know, blink twice if you're in trouble, cat. Blink fucking twice. I'm wondering if in this video, because she does look so uncomfortable, what if he promised her a lot of shit that did not actually come through? Yeah. Oh, baby, I, I'm I'm almost a millionaire. She comes there and she finds a bathroom that's fucked up. She finds, uh, you know, garbage all over the house. You know, and she's too embarrassed to go back home. She's literally stuck with the guy. And now only is she stuck with the guy. She's now stuck with the guy who is literally removing things from her to keep herself healthy. Exercise bike? Yeah, you don't need that. Combativeness was welcome. Where this can Blink. reveal caused belief, the next can reveal only brought frustration. What Phil was currently revealing was a sponsorship from OP Seats. The same day Phil revealed it, OP Seats terminated their contract with Phil due to the backlash <laughs> they were getting. So let's talk, because I want to tell you the full story of how I basically obtained sponsorship. And then all of a sudden, because of the actions of trolls, uh, the sponsorship is now gone. Okay? Even so, in February, Phil procured a different sponsor but remained with a similar product of a gaming chair. Gaming chairs across the board are disreputable for their style of function. That was not the only reason Sponseat, the sponsor of Phil, was getting backlash. As it was discovered, this new company was not really a company at all. It was a person drop shipping cheap gaming chairs with an inflated price. So not only did this new sponsorship fall through, the company attached to it filled along with it. Phil was hardly sympathetic. The fact of the matter is, folks, it doesn't really affect me because guess what? I mean, I got the chair. <laughs> I got the chair already. That's why I didn't do a lick of promotion until I got the chair. And I talked to the guy up front about this, the possibility of nasty shit happening. And he said, no, I understand. I'll, don't worry, we'll put up with it. It is what it is, guys. As much as detractors work to spoil his mood, they can hardly compete with the natural and novel interactions Phil has, like with this 11-year-old on VR chat. Sure, where is the waiting room? Right behind you, idiot. <laughs> you didn't have to call me an idiot. I just walked in the door. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He could have literally just looked ar well, around. Like around you would have been able to know. He could have literally just looked around and, uh, you know, seen where the, you know, looked at stuff instead of just instantly just looking straight, you know, ahead. Oh, it literally says waiting room on top of it. Wow. You're quite rude. Wow. I'm 11. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm 11. Deal with it. The thing is, yeah, kids are kids can be assholes. I'm not going to deny it. But to me, he crossed the line when he threatened to, you know, threatened bodily harm against an 11 year old. He could have just been the bigger man, and just said, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah. You know. But no, he has to try to be Phil Burnell. He needs to be a tough guy, ladies and gentlemen. And a big tough guy, apparently he would slap the shit out of that girl. Which, I'll, I, by the way, he would not. He fucking would not. He he is a talker. The fact that he lives in a gated community where he openly is proud to say, well, if somebody comes near the property, I'll call the cops. No, he's not a fucking tough guy. He's not. He's a coward. Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. <laughs> I would have fucking pimp slapped that shit out of that. <laughs> this Pokemon themed pixel art was made to commemorate the occasion. These small moments carried Phil's live streams for 2018. Nothing individually significant happening, but enough happening to remind the internet of his existence. This all hardly competed with ongoing events, relative to the collaboration between popular live streamer Ninja and popular musician Drake, DSP was practically non-existent. Until he began tweeting about their collaboration, starting by calling Drake and Ninja overrated. Phil sought to detract from this collaboration. Oh, by the way, Phil, during this whole, uh, renaissance that Phil likes to claim that he's having, where are all the major recognizable, you know, content creators? All Phil can really do is get lol cows such as Kino Casino or the King Lol Cow himself, uh, Keemstar. He actually did have, uh, he had June the King 
on his podcast, but basically June the King basically stood up for himself and basically, you know, agreed with Turkey Tom saying that Phil is in decline. Or failure, whatever the fucking correct term was. If Phil is having is having such a positive turnaround, why do you not see anybody he has truly shit on actually want to interact with him? And the fact is, it's because he's not having a turnaround. He's not. He's just getting the eye, he's getting the attention of other lol cows. That's why he's fucking reaching out to low tier God right now. Instead of reaching out to low tier God, why doesn't he reach out to Ninja? Why doesn't he reach out to Tobiscus? Why doesn't he reach out to, uh, oh God, who is that? There was a woman that he said was going to an EA event or something and she's only going to get gang banged or something like that. Why doesn't he actually reach out to the people that he has shit on, like Ninja and Tobiscus, like I already said? And the answer is because they would literally look at him and tell him to go fuck off. No, nah, there's no renaissance here, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a lol cow who is actually getting the eyes of other lol cows, and he's interacting with other lol cows. He's doing absolutely nothing positive to help his image. From the likes of which were rarely, if ever, seen. Tweet after tweet, he argued with Twitter users. At some point, he even slid a PewDiePie, claiming he is a product of hype and not quality content. Either these interactions struck a chord, or Phil was just in many prominent content creators' minds as, in not-so-quick succession, they took their turns mocking Phil, like iDubs promoting the idea of Phil doing a collaboration with any rapper. In the background, there were leaks about Phil wanting to take down a video that for a short moment mentioned the escort saga, but in the foreground was PewDiePie. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looked like. Onion Man versus Soy Boy. <laughs> I Justine was voted into another response from the same quote, and Phil. I Justine, that's who I was thinking of. Was I Justine? He was the one that made a, a the uh, a tweet about her going to like an EA conference or whatever, or uh, so it was some sort of event, and she was only there to get gang banged. Oh yeah, he's a lovely guy, right? 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 To to it's totally just the detractors and the trolls who are shitting on the guy, isn't it? Yeah, he never does anything wrong. Look over here. Look over here. It's a detractors. Don't look over here at what the stuff I'm doing. Or oh, okay, that's a hot. Look over here. The detractors are over here doing bad stuff to me. I'm calling somebody a whore and a slut. Don't look at that though. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, that's the way it is. He thinks he can talk shit and expect no repercussions. And people like me, like Duty Streams, like Tevin, we are the consequences to his actions finally also made it into a Watch Mojo video. This Twitch user had the bad idea of prematurely turning on his camera. Right before starting oh, the live camera's on! He it's on the whole time! Oh, 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 oh! Oh, the camera's on. <laughs> the camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Hello! There was a renaissance Hello. of sorts in ways creators <laughs> were able to make Phil entertaining. Few as creative as L. Crimson King. This fucking piece of shit! This disc! See this fucking piece of garbage disc? <laughs> Fuck it. It's gonna stay back there forever. I'm never fucking picking it up again. Don't ever ask me to play that fucking game again. That's the worst fucking game. That game is way worse than Revolution 60. Seriously. Behind you, idiot. You click on that. You didn't have to call me an idiot. I just walked in the door. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. This video would be honored by the creation of its own snore compilation. This emphasis on creative ways to mock Phil made the latter half of 2018 appear creatively bankrupt in comparison. In the same vein, Phil was also suffering from his own potential bankruptcy. Basically, in a nutshell, without going into too much detail, uh, I'm not partnered anymore. In July, he announced that he had split from Curse, claiming the separation to be amicable. Now, having to rely on his own, on suspended assets account, Phil found that he was making far less than he was with his partnership. On top of this, his views were halved without explanation, going from an average of 2 million a month to hovering just around 1 million. And so Phil did what he calls an emergency livestream, trying to brainstorm ways and goat sympathetic viewers to help with donations. Provided was also advice. A common recommendation is to get- The best advice I could give Phil, get a fucking job. YouTube was never meant to be seen as a legitimate business for people. 
It was originally actually made to be a repository for people to post stupid fucking shit like me. It was never it was never conceived with the idea of, hey, you know what would be a good uh good future for this business? Having lazy motherfuckers make video game content on, every day. It was and, oh and beg for money also. It wasn't made for that. It wasn't made for that. Get a fucking job, DSP. Get a job outside of content creation. Phil, not wanting to consider this option, had these messages delivered in rather creative ways. Phil, being a fan of the WWE, reacted to this person <laughs> holding up a sign that reads, quote, DSP, get a job, unquote. This was not even the first time this happened. <laughs> Last year, a person held up a similar sign, though less legible. Phil opting to continue streaming to dwindling audience would suffer the consequences of dealing with his remaining audience. These are super fans that stuck with him regardless of countless examples of Phil's ill will, and on the other side are his most persistent trolls that remain even after the majority of trolls lost interest in Phil's cyclical nature. On the other side was a user known as Student Common or Tut for short. They came in donating thousands of dollars, but also used the money they donated as leverage as they could circumvent what would get a normal person banned simply because of their influence. But even Tut pushed this be- Okay, so- to me, I view detractors and trolls differently. To me, a detractor is somebody who has been burned by Phil from one in one way or another. And they're there basically just to kind of, like me, like we make videos and we point out Phil's hypocrisy. To me, the trolls are something even worse. They're the ones that constantly fucking pay Phil Burnell. You know, they're, they're the ones that pay him to keep him going. If it wasn't for the fucking trolls... I doubt that Phil would not be here. Beyond what Phil could endure. After creating much unwanted attention for Phil and Phil pushing back, Todd threatened to charge back the money he donated. A chargeback is when someone donates money, gets the desired effect of having the streamer read their message, and then, in a later date, petitions PayPal or whatever financial medium they're using to get their money back. This is done by stating that the money was fraudulently sent, or by other dishonest means. And Tut did try to charge back some of that money, only to fail as PayPal sided with Phil. This was a victory for Phil, but in the grand scheme of how much he was bound to owe, it didn't seem like much. In addition to my normal income, I need to raise about another roughly $16,000 between now and April. <sighs> this plays into why Phil is labeled as an e-beggar a person that petitions, guilts, or even demands donations from their audience. While it is normal for streamers to subtly stimulate donations through appreciation, Fell's tactics are more direct. Taxes are going to be my main thing I have to figure out this year, but making enough money not only- Once again, this would have been the case where I'd say, you want money, get a fucking job. See, this is something that his Phil's parents never did. They literally coddled him. And this is what- Bill Burnell is the product of when you coddle your child too much. To pay the bills, but I, you know my taxes are coming up, and right now I'm focused on just getting through this year. Hopefully, being able to pay my taxes somehow. I'll be honest with you guys. Yeah, taxes are always something that are on my mind. You know, I've got tax payments due. So, you know, my state taxes are due in January. My federal taxes are due in, in April. If I could get through paying the taxes for next year, the federal taxes, their taxes were high things like tip goals and the like on stream to try to raise funds uh for my taxes and all that this very much works in december phil's relentless discussions of money launched him into the fourth highest number of tier three subs these are subscribers that wait a minute wait a minute hold on hold on i gotta I got go back i think that's an old account of mine I think that's an old account of mine. I can't be sure, though. Hmm. Discussions of money launched him into the fourth highest number of tier three subs. These are subscribers that cost $25 and somehow Phil got 204 of them. With an average God. of 372 viewers means that each viewer paid on average $13 solely from their tier three subs. But also, the donations are disproportionate as subscriptions can be gifted. Donations and other tiers of sub have also been taken into consideration, and Phil also receives donations that for the time being were not accounted for. 
Typically, surges and donations, or the like, are linked to unique or interesting streamers rising in the ranks and receiving donations to produce more of their content. And to Phil's credit, he was planning to do something unique. Something no streamer would ever even consider. And that is a marathon to raise money to pay for his taxes. Alright, it's going to be via tips, meaning the only real viable way for you to, to, to contribute and help me out in this situation is to tip me because you tip me via sending funds to my PayPal and that allows me to have those funds right away and put those funds toward my taxes. The marathon was to take place. Okay, hold on. I, I am curious because it sounds like an old account of mine. Well, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Just as At Jeff Miller forever. Yeah, that's what I got. Apparently, yeah, it must have been an old account because I just did a search for it and it comes back that there's no... Uh, let me show you. Let's see here. Okay, do that. And we'll do this. No, wrong one. Wrong one. Ah! Okay, hold on. Nope. Let's see here. Oh, no, that's number three. Hold on. No, that's where's number two at? What is it? God, hold on. This one? No, I wish it. Okay, yeah, there we go. See, I did a search for Jeff Miller forever. It must have been old accounts that I ended up closing down. Hmm. Okay, but yeah, it it it's weird to see something that could. I think that's mine. I couldn't, you know. Oh, well. But, yeah. Still, it's amazing what happens when, uh, you know, when people get their, uh, still their parents' credit card, right? You know, like, that sounds like something I would say, but I can't be sure. But, yeah, as you saw there, I did Jeff Miller forever, and it did not show up. So, yeah. Okay. Let's continue on. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. If that was me, thanks a lot, June. <laughs> Meaning, the only real viable way for you to, to, to contribute and help me out in this situation is to tip me because you tip me via sending funds to my PayPal, and that allows me to have those funds right away and put those funds toward my taxes. The marathon was to take place in March of 2019. The goal was to raise around $5,000 through tips. And as Phil mentioned, the tips he received, which is the money he made through PayPal and not subscriptions or other Twitch integrated services, would be used towards taxes. More than likely, probably now, at this point, I've probably raised like around $900 to $950 because every dollar tip I only get 67 cents out of. I probably got, no lie, like $500 tips today and all those only si like 60%. So, but it is what it is. Thank you guys. This was not very close to his $5,000 goal. So Phil did a second marathon in April where he made a bit more money as seen through the bar at the top. Again, stating where all the money would go to. I said some people have been asking me questions like, so what's going to happen now? Um, It's very simple. With all the money that I've raised for these taxes, I'm going to go to my tax guy and say, this is what I have. There was some natural skepticism and some paranoia around Phil, as he has shown himself to be a dishonest person. And so, the fuck in the you say? community, wild theories spread, but only the most gullible swallowed all theories around Phil. The newest theory came from the blindsiding reveal that Phil had gotten married to Kat and used the funds earned from the tax marathon streams to finance some of the wedding. But I remember that when this happened, that he, uh, he had, I think it was another special event that he was trying to raise money to go see his parents because his parents were dying. His, par his parents were on death's door, ladies and gentlemen. He wasn't sure that if he, if he did not go see them this time or that time, that he wasn't sure if he'd ever see them again. He came back. He was married. He was married. Not only was he married, he had the famous 10-year plan, ladies and gentlemen. The 10-year plan. Phil got on stream to quell some of the unrest. And by the way, as I'm going to explain, don't worry. Again, everything's going to be explained. Everything I've told you guys up front about that stuff is true. Everything, every dollar that was raised to help with taxes is going towards the taxes. Now Phil is reasserting that all the money went to taxes. But later in the day, he states that, that was not the case. And I did. I did two different marathon events, all right, 
that raised in total, if you actually look at the amount of tips that I raised that can go towards these taxes was around, I think just, I want to say just under $2,500, but also what people need to understand, which they don't, is that normally I raise tips and normally tips go to paying bills. So even though I raised $2,500, a chunk of that had to just go to pay my monthly stuff normally. And so even though I raised 2,500 in reality, it was probably under 2,000 that I had left over afterwards to put towards the federal taxes. Thale had lied throughout his marathon streams and the streams afterwards by now stating that over $500 or so went towards his bills and other expenses. This contradiction seemed too great, so I asked Phil about it. Phil responded with a superbly long-winded response. His answer is buried in this line two words in his 357-word response. Quote, I misspoke. Unquote. Meaning okay, I'm going to just take a quick break. I got to stretch my legs. I've been recording for a little bit, so I'm going to stretch my legs. And when I return, I will be with a continuation of this uh, of this part of the DSP React. So let, let I'll be right... You know what I'm saying. I'll be right back. Okay, I got my... Stretch my legs a little bit, and I'm back. So let's continue on, shall we? that he misspoke about all the money going to taxes. What I failed to mention was this was not the only piece of evidence I had reconfirming that all the money from his fundraising would go to taxes. But again, as I've already said, I can assure all of you that there was no deception whatsoever on my part outside oh, of the fact that the that money existed. Ugh. All funds that I raised for taxes and the like are going towards taxes. Not a dollar. Not a single dollar that was supposed to be raised for taxes went towards anything during this, this wedding or anything. Yeah, that's a fucking the lie. The clear answer that's is, lie. Phil lied, and the money raised is unaccountable. Oh my god, Phil Burnell lied? Who would have fucking thought? Oh, that's right, the same guy who fucking said that everything he was telling people about WWE champions that he was lying. Yeah. You don't have to fucking tell me that Phil Burnell was lying when it came to money. The motherfucker's always lying. When Phil Burnell is talking, it's called lying, ladies and gentlemen. What few people knew at the time was Phil had a 10-year plan. In a conversation with his mother, who had bailed him out previously and delayed a potential bankruptcy, Phil was presented with two decisions, file for bankruptcy or develop a 10-year plan. This 10-year plan was meant to phase him out of content creation into a more traditional job. It was even clear to his family at this point. <laughs> the dumb fuck parents of his, they actually believed that he would actually go through it with it. They actually thought that their son would actually do what's fucking right. Those fucking idiots. Holy shit. Phil even has his parents work. Holy fucking shit. And that his online presence was only causing trouble for him and those surrounding him. Even now, there was an uproar of displeasure where a few mods were rebelling and leaking private chats and other items surrounding Phil due to his recent lies about where the marathon money was going. Phil did not understand the depth of this backlash. On the flip side, Phil did not understand Goodwill either. On May 9, 2019, Phil tweeted, quote, Took a day off the entire internet, but hashtag pro Jared Hilarity was at the top of everyone's Twitter feed. Haha, <laughs> whoops. Unquote. Now that pro Jared was growing through his own controversy sparked from his lewd Tumblr and confusing open relationship, Phil jumped in on the anti pro Jared bandwagon. After this resoundingly successful tweet, Phil went on a stream chat and simultaneously downplayed and exaggerated the success of the tweet. By the 11th, Phil was so confident that this tweet was bringing him the goodwill of the internet that he made this. The reason I'm doing this is because in the past couple of days, the internet at large has finally kind of turned an eye to me for the first time in a major way in a long time in an actual positive light. Does this sound familiar, ladies and gentlemen? Does this sound familiar? This is DSP Gaming Renaissance version 1.0. We are now at DSP re, re, uh, re, 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 my God, I just said the word. I can't even fucking say it now. Renaissance, sorry. We are at DSP Renaissance 2.0 right now. Nothing fucking changes. This video is titled, DSP Tries It, Debunking Seven Years of Slander. In a nearly two-hour video, Phil took a cursory glance at some of his controversial moments, like the time he said Minecraft was stupid, dating Panda Lee while she was 18, or explaining the escort drama that had long been proven false. Lacking here was everything else, from his financial woes, his treatment of his audience, 
is lashing out at other creators through minimizing their achievements or insulting them altogether. Phil's video was completely lackluster. Even a successful video dispelling his controversies would not change the fact that the reason people watch Phil is to laugh at his antics. His Saucy Mondays, streams where he goes off camera to stir a pot of Italian sauce, has no inherent value to regular people. But his lies, on the other hand, tend to be captivating. Marky Mark says, what is my favorite drink? I like White Russians. Oh, I never had a White Russian before. Never had a White Russian. What drew viewers' attention now was a reveal stream with a $1,000 goal. Phil promised a big, positive reveal. Users guessed all throughout, none of them hit the mark. Yeah. Some even thought that cat. the reveal was a new cat, which Phil denied. Finally, the goal was hit and the positive reveal came. I got someone I'd like you to meet. Come on up here. Come on up here, buddy. You want to come up here? You... This motherfucker's uh, excuse. Well, you said it was a new cat. I had this cat for a while, so I actually was right. Motherfucker, you fucking piece of shit liar. All right, and it's funny because we've, with all the stuff that we've had to do, we've had to keep a lot of stuff private. Come on up here. The here cat's too fucking stupid Ladies to do what he needs to do. I'd like to introduce you to our pet. Phil's reveal was his cat Jasper, but users already guessed the reveal was a new cat. Phil's reasoning was they did not guess correctly enough. So a lot of people, you're right, a lot of people did guess that a cat was the thing. The thing is a lot of people say, oh, it's a new cat, it's a new cat. It's not. Jasper actually has been my, our cat for a while. On top of this, Phil got another $1,000 donation from a single donor through the miscommunication of there being a second positive reveal. The easiest way to find out how controversial a stream was was to find out how many bans occurred that day. And according to this user made graph, the day Jasper was revealed, there were 451 bans on his stream. But this graph relates to Phil's stream only. On September 29th, 2019, Phil was seen not on his own channel, but on the Quarterings, a creator who is controversial in his own right, but utilizes it to make it. Another lol cow, basically. Noticing who he can really only interact with is all. Phil can only really interact with people that are the dredges of society, ladies and gentlemen. Living. This is something long anticipated because Phil sits in the relative safety of his own streams and controls the dialogue. Adding a different prominent creator would mean there would be no place to hide, and some have tried to secure an interview with Phil. But Phil is very careful, very selective. He only allows those ignorant of his rich history to reach him. And even then, there can be stipulations in place to block some of the most demanding questions. Like how much does Phil owe? Where do the thousands of dollars in donations end up? Does he believe himself to be financially responsible? And instead of that, viewers got this. I have, I have this is the most popular question. Okay. <laughs> Are you right? Where did the load go? Normally, a like to dislike ratio is the most basic way to see how much viewers agree with any which video. But this time, there is something better. The quartering of softball interview got 90,000 views. These can represent interest in particularly how many care to view it, how many aligned with the interview. With that in mind, It's a Gundam, a channel that is hardly DSP-centric, covered the interview and broke down how Phil misrepresents himself while going into some of the deeper Phil lore. It's a Gundam's video blew the quartering's interview out of the water, as not only was it twice as long as expected from an analysis, but it also stands with 1.6 million views. Even then, It's a Gundam willingly skipped over or just summarized much of the Phil lore only pertinent to the interview. Phil's endless list of controversial moments was in the end helping him. Even if Phil acts dastardly, there is so much information needed to understand how all its controversies tie into one another, that virtually anyone not in the detractor community is indifferent to anything non-viral that Phil does. What's a drop in an already overflowing bucket? What also helps Phil are his worst trolls that allow him to misrepresent and discredit the detractor community as a whole. On Kiwi Farms, doxings are a common sight, information spread for the sake of harassment. At one point, these were not so common until one individual showed up on the farms. A user that went by Nigel of UKIP. For what would be the next couple of years, this individual will freely dox those in Phil's vortex. It's hard to say how he was doing it. He could have had insider information and somehow used the donor's PayPal information to craft a dox, or simply just searched for usernames across social media websites until he found commonalities ultimately leading to the dox of those within the Phil sphere. 
The only other strange instance of doxing was from a difficult to cover story as the relevant threads where this mass dox was held were expunged. And of course, the Wayback Machine excludes Kiwi Farms. All that is left are recollections and videos that serve of evidence of its existence. Quote, here's a pretty good recap of the entire docu show. But since the thread itself has apparently been nuked, I'll just add some context and missing details for anyone who wasn't around back then. It was known as the January Harvest of 2018. It started because BSV got into a tangle with the nasty on here. Apparently got stupid ugly, families threatened, etc. The KF dog sluts issued an ultimatum to DSP. Admit publicly to your tardians that your main paywell, BSV, has been saying doing some stupid shit. Which yes, at the time, or where going to drop a super dox at a rate of 1 per day on your The King of Hate farm dwelling redacted. This will begin on X date and continue until you have done this one simple and justified and true thing. Basically just disavow BSV's behavior. Lol unironic freedom forum members and Kiwis with trolling accounts over there alike and become tremble with fear. No one is safe lol lol. Philip piss baby fuck you Burnell responds by shoving his head in the quicksand. Turbo doxing commences. After like 3 day of this Waco standoff, his terrified forum users go from screaming at Phil to do something to stop this and to a 5 alarm dumpster fire. Standoff continues until Phil's revenue begins tanking a bit. He's now forced to address this matter on air. Does See, this is one thing I do not agree with. Like I already said, and I know I sound like a broken record, you do stuff like this, you could serve uh, prison time. Phil's not worth it. Phil, Phil, it's okay to fucking razz the guy or point out his lies, but when you're starting to do shit that could be, you know, get you prison time, that's where I'm like, nope. Not for me, dude. Not for me. He's definitely not worth it. It's nothing. Says nothing he was told to admit. Advises his audience that anything the bad dogs he men do have done to them is their fault. Not his because they're stupid and they use his forum, lol fair, and have personal shit in their online profiles that anyone can see. Which would have been his one valid argument in all this if it hadn't been tendered in his signature blame shifting desperation and also contradiction by some other horseshit he said 30 seconds later. The victims of these cyber bullies shoulder all the blame in this and everyone is stupid because you should just know that any internet presence puts you at risk of, well, everything. NMF and ICD. Doc's harvest continues. Despite having zero leverage, Fatboy gives the infamous 19 hour olive branch speech as a counter offer to everyone who doesn't dick ride him on the internet. Peaceful coexistence? Okay. No more talking shit from either side? Sound good? Nine seconds later he resumes talking shit about dirt detractors. No negotiating with terrorists though. Harvest continues. Harvest got tedious as it quickly became obvious that most of the people that orbit him are boring turbo spats. Minor wheelchair exodus. Harvest ends. Phil advises the internet that this constitutes a hard W for him. Oh, to see the world through the blurry chain goggles of his squinty dead eyes. Phil resumes pushing buttons. Unquote. That was a quick rundown of what was called the January Harvest. The user also linked to a longer rundown of three videos. The overall runtime of those videos are four and a half hours. As a reminder, these videos are considered the insignificant parts of Phil's history. The larger portions have longer running history and tie themselves well together. Like at the start of 2020, there were two things around Phil being discussed. A bankruptcy, which had its own honorary sign displayed at a WWE pay-per-view event, which is also attached to the theory around a mobile game known as WWE Champions. The bankruptcy is far more forward and clear, and has been a long time coming with Phil discussing his want to file for bankruptcy through 2019. Only now in January 2020 was the process underway. But basically eventually, I sat down and I saw a lawyer, and talked to the lawyer and the lawyer said, you know, with your situation, you know, there's really no way out besides declaring bankruptcy. Like, there's no way. How are you going to get out of not only owing all this debt that you have behind the scenes through credit cards and loans, but now you've got a home that you can't pay for and they're going to foreclose on you. Chances are they're going to sue you. The bankruptcy forms made it into the hands of the detractors. In these dense, lengthy legal forms were revelations that finally, among many other things, put a number on Phil's total debt. The unsecured creditors on page 20 list all of Phil's unsecured claims so items that had no collateral such as personal loans and credit cards. The page 1 of 7 on the bottom right corner was already hinting at the sheer amount of debt Phil had incurred. The only thing more impactful will be going through all the individual accounts. And so, number 1, $1,100 to an American Express card. Number 2, $6,400 on a different American Express card. 
Number three, 26,000 to Bank of America. Number Holy four, 2.7 thousand to BMW of North America. Number five, $10,700 to a Capital One credit card. Number six, $14,100 to a Chase credit card. Number seven, $8,500 to a Citibank credit card. Number eight, 13,800 to a different Citibank credit card. Number nine, $15,600 to Citibank. Okay, it looks like that he's just rounding up or rounding up or rounding down because uh, there was a couple there that he would just give a round, about, uh, round number, but there's actually a little bit more there. So this number could actually be just a little bit higher. Number 10, $10,000 to a discovery. Okay, now like that one, I know it's blurry, but it, he said $10,000 and it looked like it was 10051 You know, like I know it's only $51, but still th that adds up though. Number credit card. Number 11, 9,300 to Lending Club Corporation. Number 12, 4,300 to Prosper Marketplace. Number 13, 3,800 to Sam's. Oh my God. And finally, Holy number shit. 14, 4,700 to U.S. Bank. This comes to a grand total of $131,550.28. The secured loans, loans with collateral, include his car and Washington condo, which was now his only condo. To add to this, on page 19, readers could see Phil still owed over $100,000 on his Connecticut condo in which he originally purchased for $131,000. This means he was paying the minimum. Or if he really wanted to, he could have paid the entire thing off and lived there within just a few years of purchasing it. Hell, he could have rented that thing out. He could have rented it out. And I, then he, the, wasn't one of his, his excuses that he, uh, like he had a family member or something, but he couldn't rent it out to her or what? I can't recall what it was. But the fact is he could have actually rented that thing out. And that would have basically paid itself off after a few years. Instead, he is now here, 11 years later, owing the IRS $15,000, having virtually no credit, being stripped of what little he accrued and being returned back to nothing. Was it worth enduring a decade of trolls, daily streams, managing lies, and being hated in the only community you know? The answer is yes, because Phil has something almost no one else has. Level 13 WWE Superstar, introducing Down from the Rafters. Phil's plights were all worth it because of this Candy Crush, gotcha-designed phone game themed around the WWE, known as WWE Champions. It is important to note that Phil has refuted investing into this game to the extent people have claimed. Despite a mountain of very strong evidence, he has room to dismiss it because there is no smoking gun. Phil has a history- Except now that he has literally, you know, copped, it, copped out to it. He is literally down from the rafters. Although he tried to cover one lie with another lie, basically saying, oh, oh, I was down from the rafters. I'm not down from the rafters anymore. I sold it. Bullshit. You still have it, Phil. You may be able to pull that bullshit on your viewers. Don't try pulling it on the detractors. We know that shit. Yeah, playing other mobile games themed around the WWE and was not shy to spend money on microtransactions to get an advantage. However, on WWE Champions, there is an account that has seen some tremendous climbing in the leaderboards that would be impossible without microtransactions. This account's name was They Call Me DSP. Phil's Twitter handle is also They Call Me DSP. Phil has a history of using that username in other apps like Pokemon Go, and Phil in the past has admitted to playing. WWE Champions is a game that plays a lot like um, Candy Crush, of all games, or what's the other one, Bejeweled? It plays like those two games with wrestlers, and honestly, the game cheats and is not very good, but I just play it because it has wrestlers in it. What detractors seek to prove is that the account, they call me DSP, is indeed Dark Side Phil. If they can attach this account to Phil, then that alone proves that Phil spent tens of thousands of dollars on this game. This is where TJ Gamebox comes in, a person that plays the same mobile game. He was dragged into this mess through unscrupulous threats. Um, we're playing WWE Champions, and... We're part of a guild called uh, Xena, and the guild, um, unfortunately, was joined by a person that was named, they call me DSP. The second that he was um, in my guild, 
um, a lot of people in my guild were threatened to be doxxed by uh, the tractors um, for having him in the guild because they didn't want us to go ahead and give him any prominence in the game. It was clear that detractors were keeping tabs on the They Call Me DSP account, and they were following this account through various guilds threatening guild members in-game. Other guilds, like TJ's guild, would adhere to the detractor demands and remove They Call Me DSP. It is also important to note that besides Phil claiming that he does not own the account, attempts have been made to reach out to the They Call Me DSP account to see if the owner could somehow prove that they were not DSP. The owner was not cooperative, which gives more fuel to the theory. As for TJ, having some prior knowledge of Phil became interested in this investigation. So I went further into it. Um, I decided to keep track of money, keep track of tabs, keep track of when he's online. When I was, I would find that he was online whenever DSP was offline. And whenever he was online um, streaming, that account was offline. The thing is, with higher spenders or those more invested in games, guilds, clans, whatever it may be, drift off their game and use third-party software to communicate with one another. This, in most cases, is Discord, but in other cases it can be apps like WhatsApp, which is primarily used for communication. There is also the Line app, which serves a similar function. And as it so happens, one of the guilds they call me DSP joined was using the Line app. Um, when I noticed he joined one of the guilds, he, it, there was a part where he could be part of the Line app. It says Line app was used for communication. So um, I did a little bit of digging and found that if you connected his phone number, because this phone number is public, um, onto uh, the Line app, it popped up with They Call Me DSP. This is a strong form of verification. You type in your number, then the app sends a message with a code to that number. This is rather straightforward because though numbers can be duped with outgoing messages, messaging the number back will result in reaching the actual number and not any spoofed one. Forgetting about the need of phone verification, Phil initially dismissed it as a troll with creating a line account under the Call Me DSP. Sounds like someone made an account in my name to try to fucking screw me over just like discords and everything else that's happened this year. I know nothing about it, but it sounds like you're a conspiracy theorist, doesn't it? A viewer then informs Phil that his number is tied to the line app account to where Phil changes his tune. Billy Bit Big Boy, you have to enter a code from an SMS message when you download the app. The troll has access to your text message and I contact the authorities if I were you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just, seriously, like there's no way to dupe one of these app companies into thinking that you are using a phone number that you're not, right? Or there's no possible way that in the six years since my cell phone's been doxxed that I changed my number, right? No way that possible that I- He never changed his number. People have proven that. Next! I would have possibly done that, right? Phil claims two things. Firstly, that it may be possible to fool a company through a spoofed number, which it is not. The second is Phil introducing the potential that he changed his number during this time, which was countered by someone calling Phil's number and getting this. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Phil Burnell. Not only that, when ranting about John Rambo, he slips up. I have nothing to make amends for with Rambo. I never mistreated the guy. The guy was always told me that he was happy when we were doing work together and everything. He's the one who cut off contact with me and lied to me saying everything was alright but then stopped talking to me and then made a video, negative video about me later. He would have to reach out to me. I am the one who still has the same phone number. I'm the one who, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the guy who's still easily reachable. What this proves is Phil has a line account. And also, another item to stack on the massive pile of Phil's lies. But again, Phil could run with the narrative that just because he has a line account that is also under the Economy DSP, that doesn't prove that he plays WWE Champions. And so the investigation continues and lands on a different third party, Discord. Oh, um, so I have sources of him uh, joining and being kicked out of my guild. I have sources of, I would sources of him um, being in another uh, WD Champions uh, Discord and me talking to him. This is significantly more promising than the Line app, because unlike the Line app, They Call Me DSP's Discord is clearly seen interacting with TJ's guild. And while anyone could choose whatever name they please on Discord, all accounts had to have a unique code attached to them. And thanks to a bot archive and the people that left the Discord, that not only shows the name, but also unique Discord ID, which is 4058. 
At the time, Phil also had a secret mod discord and a rogue mod just happened to leak Phil's unique discord ID, which was also 4058. <laughs> Though the numbers are clear, what Phil now relies on is trying to state that the evidence itself is illegitimate. Somehow, one way or another, some image is altered and of course, they never use discord for the- That's the thing about Phil, no matter, no matter how much evidence we can get, we can literally get all the evidence. Phil will literally, literally always fall back to- it's fake. It's fake. I that's not me. I refuse to accept acknowledge any of it. Not me at all. That's the mentality of a child. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. You know, it's it's the whole John Cena thing. You can't see me. Those purposes. The only time I ever used Discord was to chat with people back when I had a, a partnership with uh, Twitch and, and stuff like that. I had a contact who I chatted to a Discord, but outside of that. I've never used it for anything else. I don't even know what line app is. I guess it's just chat. I don't know. Maybe it does do those other things. I have no idea. At this point, one can reasonably deduce that they call me DSP as Phil. Though Phil claims what should be definitive evidence is false and relies on his minuscule credibility to sway his audience. And so the investigation continues to find something more definitive that Phil cannot excuse as false. This is where the bankruptcy documents come into play. His expenses are most pertinent. On page 32 of his bankruptcy petition, these personal expenses are itemized between him and his wife. His monthly expenses come around to $5,100. His mortgage and tax payment plan make up for nearly half of his personal expenses. There's nothing eyebrow raising here. But then you look on Form 122A, the monthly business income and expenses. Here you find something entirely different. On page 4, it shows what Phil's income for the months of July, August, September, October, November, and December of 2019 were. He never made under $8,000, and in just these 6 months, made a total of $55,000. But did he really? In this form, he listed his business expenses, which are separate from personal expenses. Expenses meant to only be related to his content creation job. These expenses are $9,000 for the month of July, $5,400 for August, $3,100 for September, $4,400 for October, $4,300 for November, and $4,900 for December. In July alone, he claims to have lost $867 from his streaming job somehow. And because these do not have to be itemized, as the only purpose of this form is to make sure you're not making enough money to reasonably pay off your debts, means Phil does not have to explain how a job, with virtually no overhead, where at most his expenses should be limited to purchasing games, is costing thousands of dollars a month. What's more, on his bankruptcy petition on page 14 of 50, he claims to only have $1,500 in business assets. So as the courts would see it, these expenses would have to go into services. It is understood that Phil doesn't pay his mods. On the contrary, his mods pay him. He asks viewers to pay for his games. He doesn't use any services for his business that would charge those thousands of dollars. And so this leaves many to believe this is how Phil hides his WWE Champions transactions, labeling them as business expenses. Which if Phil can play to the government's ignorance of his content creation job so long as they see it as profitable, then perhaps Phil can also do this on his taxes. And so what does Phil have in response to these official documents? When I asked him, quote, do you believe it's incorrect slash possible that you spent solely that much on your business for those months? He responded with, it's not just possible, it's true. That's what my attorney submitted and that's what was reviewed and approved in the bankruptcy case. But specifics I can never talk about because one, I didn't do those calculations. The attorney did, so I honestly have no idea what the actual- And this is why I say that Phil needs to be held accountable for what he does. I'm not saying do it illegally, but if, if information comes out that, you know, shows that he is, uh, that he's lying to the government, he needs to be- held accountable if other people have to go to jail or prison for tax evasion that's what the phil should do also but he owns his cat jasper there's also speculation now i said tax evasion i'm not sure if that's right or maybe bankruptcy evasion or whatever the correct term is if phil is doing something wrong that's underhanded he needs to basically pay the consequences like everybody else does bwe account that vanished they call me dsp disappeared from the game but there was an account that had similar stats. Uh, they call me DSP, so the gun show 87, so now Down From The Rafters, which by the way, you cannot use the name Down From The Rafters in WDA Champions because the name is too big to use. So that means it was changed by a bot. It was changed by Scrollplay. Down The Rafters was the last name change. 
As the account stated, this will be the last time they would try to change their name, as it was clear that they could not hide from the trolls that follow them, thinking that they are, quote, some idiot video game streamer that they hate, unquote. By 2020, Phil was adamant that he had quit all mobile games, not even just recently, but all the way back in 2018. In 2018, I quit all mobile games. I don't play them anymore. I got rid of them. I said, I'd rather focus time on important stuff with my family and stuff. I don't... If I remember correctly, he also made a promise to his wife, Kat, that he was no longer playing these type of video games. Or, the, the mobile games. The guy lied. If he lied about that, what else is he lying about, ladies and gentlemen? Pay to win. It got to the point where they're really fun to play at first. And then you realize you can't actually progress unless you drop money to get all the new cards. Far more captivating at the time was the ongoing bankruptcy proceedings. Yeah, the next matter is Philip Burnell. This is uh, Rochelle Sheffield for the debtor, and Philip Burnell is with me. He's in your office with you? Yes. Hey, Mr. Burnell, you there? I am present. Yeah. That audio was from a 341 meeting. In this meeting, the debtor, Phil Burnell, is accompanied by his trustee. A basic rundown of this meeting is to catch discrepancies within the bankruptcy filings. Creditors are expected to, but often don't attend. This call took place during COVID. Many facilities were closed, and the online space was looked upon as the temporary replacement, a place where Phil's trolls lived. Nancy? Yes? Sorry, there's 60 people on the line for this call, so I think that's the problem. Okay. A reason so many were invested in this call, some even live streaming it, was to see if Phil's inexplicable business expenses would be questioned. What is WWE Network? WWE oh, Network. WWE Network. That is uh, just a, an on-demand video service uh, for watching, you know, pro professional wrestling. That is not business related. Many, with the opening of that question, thought that was the moment Phil was caught. But it was just the service that was being asked about. You've provided me a copy of your PayPal account for one month. I would like to see the last six months of both of your PayPal statements. Oh no, <laughs> it's gonna happen. This also turned out to be a false positive. But again, hopes were up when Phil was asked to explain his business expenses. What do you consider a business expense? Uh, anything relating you know, to the business per the instruction of my tax attorney. So it could be, oh, okay, uh, the cost of a video game, the cost of a, a subscription for a video game, a microtransaction within a video game, um, the cost of a piece of new equipment, um, you know, maintenance on set equipment every month. Um, it could be uh, the uh, internet, cost of internet every month. It could be cost of, you know, utilities necessary for the business, you know, cost of cell phone for the business. This was dismissed rather easily, likely through the ignorance of the attendees. But if anything, it did prove that Phil knew how his business expenses were calculated, making people more curious about what they could be now that he couldn't dismiss the expenses as being ignorant of them. And then the meeting was turned to the quote-unquote creditors. Okay, I have no further questions. Are there creditors on the line? Hello? Yes, are you a creditor? There was only one person willing to confront Phil. It was a troll concealed as a creditor from Citibank who had one burning question. Uh, reviewing your filing, it looks like you, you stated here that you have about $5,000 a month in business expenses. Can you, can you itemize that for me? Hold on. What followed was a few seconds of silence. Phil was likely in conversation with his trustee and came back with this. Um, Nancy, there, I, I'm not sure his, this person is for Citibank. I'm sorry, excuse me? While the troll continued to masquerade as a representative of Citibank, through his persistence that Phil was attempting to distract from the question, there was issue with his question. With the meeting looking at the Schedule J form, the questions were pertaining to Phil's personal expenses. This is a personal bankruptcy. His business was only glanced over, with the attendees satisfied with Phil's as a solid, esoteric explanations. And so they referred him to his personal expenses, which were already broken down. Not too long after the meeting ended, with just one more outburst from a troll. Why am I poisoned? Why am I toxic? <laughs> This meeting, in terms of wanting to expose Phil, was a failure. Phil's bankruptcy case was closed, and he surrendered his Connecticut condo and remained streaming.
Though it did show there was an additional consequence of Phil's long-standing internet presence and infamy. The children that may have watched him in 2010 and grew to hate him over time have aged and become adults who are more proficient in all things, like trolling and archiving. Archiving, like creating graphs, meant to keep track of Phil's expenses. This compared to future archiving methods made these appear rudimentary. Even so, the visualization of this data makes it clear-cut that Phil's earnings are on the rise. It was long thought that his channel would fade out, but year after year it's been persistent. This is where a different archiving tool helps. PicPicGo is a website that scours <laughs> Phil's massive catalog of tens of thousands of videos. The way it works is you put in a phrase. I gotta admit, the, the people who created these search engines are fucking geniuses. Visualize the usage of a word through the trend option. And if we type invest, with a space on both sides, that way we don't get words like investment or vested, we get results relating only to the word vest. This word was not just used for demonstration, but also because this article of clothing correlates with Phil's surge of earnings. And now let's talk a little bit about the hide character, I mean come on. People are saying do I still should look for the vest, oh my god. I'll go, okay, I'll go look very quickly. I'll go, I know exactly where it would be. It would be in my front closet if I still have it. I don't think I have it, but I'll go check quickly. I'll be right back. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I, I just couldn't find the vest. <laughs> I couldn't find the vest. I'll be honest. I don't fucking understand what the people's fascination with this idiot wearing vest is. Uh, he looks like a goddamn idiot. I don't understand it. But then again, I don't understand the fact that anyone would give this guy money for simply bagging. First shirt t-shirt really contrasts the the vest. It brings up the positive side of Phil. Phil be dabbing at detractors with this new fresh streaming look. <laughs> Every day, I will do something different. One day I'll wear sunglasses. One day I'll wear a vest. Yeah, like it matters. It doesn't matter. Anyway. So we have the tips goal, I'll wear the vest. If we raise $200, I'll wear the vest and the cowboy hat. If we raise $1,000 in the next hour on my Minecraft stream, I will hop on one foot and sing Kumbaya while I'm wearing the vest and the cowboy hat. How about that? <laughs> See how stupid this shit is? The thing is, I'm not kidding you. They're like Twitch streamers that this is what happens and this is what they do. And they make the money too. Like, it's insane. Like, why? <laughs> they just pull stunts constantly on a stream. And people will toss money their way for pulling a crazy stunt. As combative as Phil was with wearing the vest for chest, the continued request to wear it and the potential of earnings was too great and he began to cave in. Yes, I will tell you guys, I will put on the vest if we hit the tips call for tonight. <laughs> there you go. It seems to be a new running thing that people want me to, to uh... People want me to, uh, put on the vest, so... Even though he caved in this one time, he wanted to be straightforward that this wouldn't be a common occurrence. We're not incentivizing those things. Fucking lie. That's a, that's a lie if I've ever heard one. For a certain tip, and I said, if we hit the tips goal tonight, I'll put on the vest. And then we hit the tips goal, so I put on the vest, just to be silly. But it's not going to be something that happens every day. If only Phil knew how wrong he was. Thank you very much. You have just pushed us over. That gets us to $106 in tips. We have reached vest streak number 13. We're on an unprecedented 16 vest streak. We're on a 20 vest streak. Now we're up to 63. We're currently at vest streak 96. Gents, we continue with 126 vest streak. We are very closely approaching the 150 vest streak. We're at 138 right now, guys. That means we've hit the tips goal 138 straight streams. Holy shit, thank you guys. What Phil's audience concocted was his easiest way to make money yet. If the stream hits $100, he will put the vest on. So long as the $100 were hit, the vest streak as it was called was maintained. This made certain that Phil was making at least $100 during the streak. Phil also added additional articles of clothing that could be worn for increased donations. As to double down on the success, Phil even began selling merchandise celebrating the vest. Guys, FYI, I'm only streaming for 10 minutes unless this continues longer than 10 minutes, which it might, but I'm only streaming for about another 10 minutes, so... No lie, unless we get the tips go within about 10 minutes, this is the end of the vest streak. It's going to end at 179. Uh, Albert Aponte to $29.30. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Alfred tonight, we have reached the tips goal. The vest streak almost ended in the month of July. 
Phil expressed his concern of it, both in and outside a stream. I can't go late. I wasn't kidding. Like, I'm done. The game is over, and it looks like the vest streak's over. So, I don't know why people were, like, the people were holding to... This is literally Phil Brunel just, he's guilting his audience. You didn't give me the money that I feel that I'm worthy of having? Well, I'm going to guilt you until you give me that money. The, the funny thing was, it didn't act, nobody actually fell for it. And to top it off, he actually, he actually stayed on the stream. It was, he turned off the camera and everything. He went to like a fucking image slideshow. And then when he finally realized that nobody was going to give him money, he's like, okay, well, okay, it's over, I guess, guys. Zero, zero, zero. Fucking hilarious. Tips or whatever tonight? On September 8th, Phil had made just $13. While viewers had pulled through a few times to rescue the best streak, the difference in donations was too great and unrealistic for anyone to save it this time. But yeah, like, I was hoping to keep the vestry going so that I could actually afford both new consoles and everything, and now it's over. So. While Phil prolonged his stream a few more minutes, no donator swooped in with a large sum to save the vest streak, and it died on day 276. Phil knew that it had to die eventually, yet was greatly displeased in the moment that it happened. The next stream, Phil was quick to try to find a different trend. Now, my wife had a crazy suggestion. All right? Oh God, I know people are, gonna, are immediately going to jump on this, but because it's it's fucking stupid and embarrassing. But my wife that is said, embarrassing. if you hit a tier two tip skull, here's what you should do. You guys ready for this? This is her 100%. This was her suggestion. All right, you ready? <laughs> Spinning in his chair as a reward did not catch on. Phil just kept the articles of clothing as standard reward for the tip skull. Yet, with the streak gone, so was all the hype. I'm actually kind of shocked because... Oh, okay, well, that was actually the end of the video. I just hit pause, but apparently that was the end of the video. But um, I'm actually kind of shocked that considering that his viewers are known for being mentally... Uh, mentally... What's the best word to say? They're, they're not mentally cognizant, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm shocked that they actually didn't stick with that because I'm pretty sure that they were getting that they were loving the fact of watching the pig roach constantly spinning in the chair like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm actually currently. Let's see here. Uh, okay, let's go. Which one? Okay, here we go. I'm actually on uh, DSP Gaming's uh, React because I want to see what the uh, if he's made the uh, the amount, let's see here. What's he at? Oh, let's go live. He's only at fourteen dollars. He's only at fourteen dollars right now. Well, we still got a couple hours left. Doesn't this normally go to like three or four p.m.? Uh, so yeah, yeah. So the thing is, uh, when he uh, when he hey, right, wrong button. Sorry. Uh, is it? I hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. Oh, three. There you go. Uh, when the money gets low, you know, when the end of the stream happens, he's going to get more pushy for more money. But anyway, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That was part three of part of uh four in this uh React DSP documentary React. I hope you have liked it. Uh, we learned a lot today, ladies and gentlemen. We learned... Hold on, let's switch our words. We learned that our boy... Uh, he lied. Then again, we already knew he lied. He lied about his bankruptcy. He, I'm pretty sure that he is hiding, you know, from the government what that money's going to. And, and like I said, if it ever comes out and the IRS comes after him, it's deservingly. The guy, the guy has lied. You don't get to uh you don't get to basically pull that shit and not pay the price. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to bounce. I got to get stuff ready for later tonight. I'm gonna to get this edited and everything, and I will see you all when uh see you all next week for the final part. The final part, I think it's like four or uh, forty minutes. So yeah, so next Sunday it will be the conclusion of 
the DS uh the Re G Chris reacts at a DSP documentary. So until then, my name is Jeff, aka G Chris, and I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Peace out.